So now in this video, we have the uh, servo here. It's a SG90 servo, and we have it wired up so that uh, basically the way I have it pointed now, wherever I turn the trim pod there, the servo is going to point in basically the same direction. So now to start off with, let's take a look at the servo. So it's a, a Tower Pro there. I think I got like five. It was a long time ago. It says Micro Servo 99. Uh, part number though is SG90. That's the data sheet you want to look up if you're going to use this part number. And um, I pretty much copied this from the data sheet. Had a little more info that's uh, 4.8 to uh, like 5 volts or whatever. So um, it said that on the side. So I think you pretty much have to use 5 volts to uh, power one of these. But in any case, we have the 555 timer outputting a signal. So that's going to go there. So we have to power it. You just directly connect that to the positive supply. So brown is a ground or the negative supply right there. And then red is the positive supply. And then we got orange. So these are not uh, being plugged into the board. I forget what type of uh, connector this is. But uh, we got this connector here. And it's made for another connector um, that has a pins that plugs into it but uh, those pins are about the same size as these breadboard jumper uh, wires there so I'm just plugging them directly into there our signal is the orange one here and um, that's coming from the 555 timer so hopefully you can see that there we got our supply pins there and our signal from the 555 timer and when it comes to the position we have the 555 timer, which it's really easy to have a different timing for the capacitor to charge. That's when the output is high versus when the capacitor is discharging, which is when the output is low. So we want approximately uh, a cycle to be about uh, 20 milliseconds. So that means if we start right when it's high and then count the time that it is low before it goes high again, that's a cycle right there. So this moving up is just the restart of the process. So this should happen about 50 times a second. I didn't measure the actual values we're getting here. It doesn't have to be exactly uh, 20 milliseconds. Um, I think it might even be able to be widely off. But in uh, any case, this is the basic uh, process that's going on. So it's not how long uh, this is going, although it has a range that it can work with. What uh, matters is how long the output is high and low. So uh, according to this, this is probably about, uh, let's point that in the same direction as the arrow, probably like uh, 1.5 milliseconds, like the halfway point. And uh, this is magnetic, it picked something up. If I reduce the resistance, so this is just wired as a voltage, uh, not a voltage divider, it's wired as a variable resistor. There's only two points, the wiper and one resistive element. So I'm gonna shorten that distance there. So now it's less resistance the output is high for a shorter period of time, probably close to about one millisecond, I'm guessing there. Now we'll go back to probably what's uh, 1.5, and then now we're gonna add resistance there, and uh, it's probably like close to two uh, milliseconds. So that is how it uh, moves its position. The timing that the output is high just based on its width tells where the position of the servo should be. And now we will look at the values of the components. So this is a 10,000 ohm uh, trim pot, but I have it wired as a variable resistor. I accidentally had the uh, ground symbol right there because I copied it as a potentiometer in a different diagram. Um, but it's a variable resistor. We just have this one path that goes along however much uh, resistance we give it, and then it uh, goes to that uh, resistor. So I have them in the order. Order doesn't matter. And... Uh, with that 10,000 ohm uh, adjustable range, I also needed 4,000 ohms in series with it. You could just use a 4,000 ohm resistor if you have one, and order here doesn't matter. Um, but I don't have one. I have 3,000, and then the next one is 4,700. Um, so I just took a 3 and a 1, and uh, they're in series for a total of uh, 4,000 ohms. Plus, we can add 10,000 more. Hopefully, that makes sense. But in any case, there you can see that path, and it comes to, it's kind of, uh, and I'm moving the uh, servo a little bit, it's coming up to that diode right there. So that's our timing capacitor there. A lot of times you see a capacitor from uh, pin number five to ground. Uh, I don't have one for one thing, it kind of blocks things, and I got to explain what it is all the time. People are not used to seeing it. Um, so in any case, 
You can get away without it most of the time. That's why I don't uh, add it. So we have a 0.22 microfarad, small value. This one is not polarized. You can put it in either uh, direction, but if it is polarized, of course, you gotta put the positive side more towards the positive power supply, negative towards the more negative supply. So that charges. And again, um, as we saw, the output, that's when the output is high as well, it's charging. And we saw that is a shorter period of time. So there you can see that's relatively low amount of resistance right there. Whereas uh, once it gets to two thirds supply voltage, then the output goes low and this discharges through pin seven. So that was the longer period of time. And there you can see, we have, you know, like uh, depending on our setting here, we have, you know, somewhere between about uh, 20 to 10 times as much uh, resistance right there in, in the approximate range right there, which as we saw before was the range you needed uh, to adjust how long the output is high versus low to adjust the position of the servo. And a couple uh, other things. So I think I have the trim pot about halfway, but you can see that's kind of low right now, which is actually the opposite of what we had before. So now when I turn it down, you can see it goes uh, over uh, quite a bit extra right there. Whereas when I go up here, it doesn't go quite as far. So we had kind of the opposite earlier because when I do set that about halfway, um, and it kind of wiggles when I bump the power supply because we lose that uh, power. This does pop off right there. And uh, unfortunately I can't, uh, like it's either got to be up a little bit or uh, down a little bit, but you know, we could set it up that way or that way or uh, whatever. And one more thing we have the power supply here. If I bump this, we kind of lose power briefly. I should have a capacitor on the rail, um, but every once in a while, you might hear it move a little bit, and you might see CC right there. Um, it's doing better now than it was, but in any case, I didn't know how much current we would need. Um, but you notice if I turn it quick enough, sometimes we see CC there, so. We should uh, bump up the uh, maximum current that this can provide. You're not getting an accurate display on here because it's short burst uh, changing current. But there we go. Uh, probably less than 0.65 uh, amps right there. 650 milliamps at uh, any given time. But for the most part, if it's just sitting there, it's uh, 6 milliamps right there. So not a lot of current that is being used up by the entire uh, circuit. Might not be using any there. Maybe if I try it. No, it's... Uh, there we go, yeah. If I move it, then it does, uh, it's pretty hard to move, actually. It's pretty strong. But uh, in any case, there you can see it's moving back into position and the current that uh, built up. But otherwise, if it's just uh, sitting in one spot, nobody's bothering it, it doesn't really uh, use any current. That's probably the current of the circuit right there. There we go, about 4 milliamps, it looks like. The rest of the current was uh, our circuit. 